Hello my fan friends and welcome to you and welcome you are to my self-playing snooker winter tournament. We're approaching the end of the round one. There's uh, this week and then next week we should be um, we should be back together. I haven't got a chat room on my computer. We had some technical difficulties. Chris Evans, not that one has worked. Not that one. Or no, not the editor of the Daily Telegraph. Um has uh, done great work and got it all together but they can't get the chat room on during live streaming but I have it running here so we might be alright uh, thank you to Welsh bloke who's just subscribed with Prime for 11 months that's surely not possible and Louise Quoff Louise Quoff I don't know she's also subscribed for 11 months thank you very much do not forget to subscribe if you're with Amazon Prime you can do that for nothing and I will still get money it's a brilliant system to steal from Ian Amazon to give to making podcasts and stuff. Um, why not follow at least because then you'll get notifications when I'm on. And uh, if you want to give actual money, become a monthly badger at gofasterstripe.com slash badges. Just sent out another wonderful box of goodies to this month's winner. But you get loads of extra interviews, loads of extra stuff. Uh, you get, for example, the full frame that I did for the BBC for their Comedians Home Alone show. Uh, not just the ridiculous four minutes they put out, the idiots. Um, so, and you join us here in the... Uh, I would have bet money. I'm assuming that um, Andy McH, who kindly runs the scoreboard for us, has uh, looked at the Wikipedia death page beforehand. And I would put £100 on the fact that he could have... I nearly tweeted him and said, I bet you can guess who I've chosen in advance. I will say that Dustin Diamond's family got in touch. Uh, they said, although they were very moved by the snooker recommendation coming halfway through last week's frame, uh, that the stuff I did about him on Twitch of Fun, which is available on YouTube or in your Twitch videos, um, meant that they could not countenance him being having this arena named after him. So the arena is now <laughs> named. Very sad death. Do prepare yourself for this. Gert Jan Najipel says. <laughs> I mean, this is uh, the laughter of grief. Uh, that um, <laughs> And Nick H did predict it. Gert Jan Najipels. We'll edit this so it doesn't have me laughing because that would seem disrespectful to the Najipels. <laughs> Family. I mean, is it is it okay for a man to laugh at the the language of another culture? He is, as I don't need to tell you, he was a Dutch politician. He was. <laughs> I'm just so upset. He was 69 years old when he died, and uh, although his Wikipedia doesn't say much about his life, um. It's got a lot about his death. During the night of 7th to 8th of February, Najipels was on his way to a big fire in a hay barn in Archvold when he died at Oppermere. It is presumed he died while clearing his car from snow after a snowstorm Darcy. Najipels could... <laughs> could... <laughs> I'm just so upset. Najipels could not be resuscitated. Now, I think there's every chance that uh, someone has created Gertjan Najipels for just this exact reaction um but uh it, it every death is a sad thing and just because someone dies clearing snow from their car on the way to a fire uh in holland that does not make it okay to laugh so um the oh god i can't see the arena being named after him next week but uh, it will be this week i spilt my dinner down me as you i quite cleverly wiped it off though and there's still some of my trousers i think that was my kids though so uh when you're 53 and you have young kids, you can pretend that the spillages are down to them. This one was me. I uh, had a very nice lentil and rice sort of curry dish my wife had made. I'm back on uh, uh, Fitness Pal. I've got 100 calories left today. Feeling pretty good about it. Um, the J is silent like P in a bath, says Chimpatot. Uh, Nijipal, Gert. Gert Jan. I mean, Gert Jan was good on his own. Um, I'm still off the boozy in Amazon. Yep, yeah, that's uh, thirty nine days. Yeah, nearly forty days. Isn't it? I've nearly done as long as Jesus. He gave up, didn't he? After forty, started eating Easter eggs again. 
I'm not going to do that. I've been off chocolate. I did have a bit of chocolate the other day, out of character at the uh, Clapham gig. It was on the table and I just needed a bit of energy before the show. And let's see if that sends me spiralling back. I did have a bit of Christmas, but apart from that, I haven't had chocolate for two years. And you might say, well, there was two occasions there quite recently, Richard. You have had chocolate, but, you know, it's compared to what it was. Uh, it's um, not too bad. Uh, hope you're having a good week. Uh, coming up this week on Twitch, if you're not interested in snooker, I, why, why are you watching? Wednesday, I will be doing Rahalastapa with Izzy Lawrence. And uh, Thursday, Twitch of Fun will be back. And I think we're going to do a Peter Dibdin. And a Peter Dibdin that might actually break the rules of Twitch. We will see. Uh, and um, that's intriguing, isn't it? Uh, and uh, you can I did two Rahalaspas over the weekend which if you felt like paying some money for uh, you can do so go to richherring.com slash Rahalaspata slash tour um, and you can see the link or check my Twitter page uh, and uh, Clapham Grand will get half the money we'll get half the money we'll make more podcasts with ours they'll keep their staff paid and their uh, theatre going with their half so even though those will come out as podcasts pretty soon it will be terrific if you haven't paid for them uh, and you want to see them before everyone else. Uh, thank you to the 600 or so people who have already downloaded it. So that is uh, fantastic. Fantastic work. Um, yeah, good, good point. Yeah, good point. Will we? Will we? Um, Basil Butler got banned earlier this last month on Twitch for kissing a photo of a vagina. Yeah, it's not that bad. I'm not going to be doing that. Um... Do they just ban you straight away if you break the rules? It's not like I... I, I, well, I can't claim I didn't know now, do they? Uh, the Phantom Vapor. Why are none of the comedians funny? I don't know what you're talking about. What? No comedians are funny? Okay. Uh, is it... Can you not even say Najipples anymore? Is that, that the problem? Um... I've heard you can't say, I can't show any jipples on here. Well, I'm not going to show my any genitals. The genitals will be implied. What about this guy? Woohoo! Did somebody say genitals? <laughs> it's me, cocky carrot. <laughs> Did someone say genitals? <laughs> it's inappropriate, cocky carrot. The uh, man has died. We not shouldn't be making light of it. He's died trying to put out a fire. Stop looking at me. Stop trying to make me corpse. I can s Don't turn around and look normal. When you're looking at me, I can see the face you're pulling, Cocky Carrot. And I'm not going to corpse because it's not funny. It's a man has died. I think it's a man. A man or a politician has died. They have died. A person has died. That's all that matters. Kitchen lights are working. Thank you. Uh, we've uh, got it sorted out. Second electrician. Had a first electrician came around and said there was nothing wrong. Everything was working. Second electrician came wrong when it wasn't working and was able to find the problem was that uh, I've got a little cell under my kitchen. It's not usable. It's a tiny little thing. Um, but the electric wire was running along the floor of that and it had very slightly flooded. And obviously the water had gone up and down. So it was a difficult one to to, uh, to give the, uh, the uh, uh, diagnose. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, but it was diagnosed by the second uh, electrician. He charged £20 more than the first electrician, but I would say he was worth that for his ability to solve the problem by putting the wiring up a bit higher. It's not a sexy cellar. It's a, it's about uh, three and a half foot high. You can crawl down in there. It's full of water at the moment and uh, no dead bodies, I don't think. I haven't really investigated very far. Uh, my uh, water softener's in there, but I don't ever re re put the stuff in that you meant to, so I, I, that's irrelevant as well. Some broken tiles down there that slipped down. That was keeping on a step. And my electricity meters are sort of on the edge of it. I hope that uh, answers your question. Uh, so, yeah, so we're back for more of the same, more snooker. That's what we should be talking about. That's why we're all here. Um, do tune into the other Twitch stuff. Do tune into that Clapham Grand feed if you would like to spend some money. I think it's £8 a eat per show. 
but that's, uh, you know, two shows in a day. It's never been attempted. And if it goes well, we might do some more at the theatre. So uh, it will be terrific if you uh, enjoyed those to keep supporting us. Sorry, the uh, live feed went wrong on the first one. It's all a bit experimental. It actually wasn't anyone's fault in the enterprise. It was the internet provider uh, went down in the error. I won't name who they are because they might stop sponsoring my other podcasts. So, um, yes, do, th thank you. I know many of you have done that, and I even spoke to some of you face-to-face -face, uh, on that. So it's a nice way to be part of the shows. And, yeah, we'll hope. Might, might try and do more next month. And then, if we're allowed to have audiences in, the Clapham Grand's not a bad place to start, because uh, we can get quite a lot in socially distanced. So we'll see what happens with that. And uh, it's not a bad place to go if it's not socially distanced, because there's a lot of seats. So we might do it. We might do a few specials from there. Let's talk about snooker. That's what we're here for. Um, we we know a lot of the names in the in the next round. Me thirty seven, of course. Me fifteen. Me eighteen. Me three. Me thirty eight. Me nineteen. Me eight. Me twenty nine. That's the first half of the draw. So me thirty seven will be playing me fifteen. Me eighteen playing me three. Me thirty eight playing me nineteen. Me eight playing me twenty nine. Me twenty two is playing me four. Me fourteen is playing me twenty seven. That's what we discovered last week. Boring Me beat Sleeping Me and uh, Total Recall Me uh, beat Ventriloquist Dummy Me. Controversial decisions. Um, uh, this week we have got Me 25, the Sam Beckett playwright Me, the Me that is very influenced by the Samuel Beckett but does not know very much about him, versus the Italian Me, Me 21. Me 21 actually got through the preliminary rounds, having never won a frame before. A match before, so impossible even a frame, uh, and beat competitive me, which was quite uh, quite a scalp to take. So has now has tasted victory. Be interesting to see. Whereas me twenty five, Samuel Beckett me. I think he may have beaten um, the other Samuel Beckett me at one point. Maybe not. Uh, he's played two one one, lost one. Me twenty five. It will have only been in that second tournament. So I can tell you all about it. Me twenty five. He uh, beat me five and then played me 31 and lost. Well, this is if that this implies he won. Oh, he did okay until he came up against the other Sam Beckett and then he lost. So that's what that's what happened. So he beat uh, self doubting me pretty easily to do. Um, my favorite thing about uh, the Samuel Beckett me, me 25 is his nickname, according to this. Uh, any true fan will have this. Uh, Sticker album. His nickname is Waiting for Pozzo, which I think is an extremely clever nickname for the other players to come up with when their other nicknames are the Welsh me, Taffy McTaffer to Welsh me from Welsh Wales. To know there's a character in Waiting for Godot called Pozzo, Pots with double Z and then genius. Utter genius. Um, and he is, of course, playing me, 21 Italian me, who up until that victory in the first round He's the only one in this book I've picked up off the shelf that has his sticker stuck in. I don't know why his sticker stuck in, but there he is. I don't know if that's a sign that he's going to win this tournament. He played one, one, played one, one, none, lost one. Uh, me, 21. I can tell you uh, who he lost to. If I, I should look this up before. I did have quite a lot of looking stuff up. Uh, he lost. Did he lose to me, one? It looks like he did. He lost to me, one. Me, one who went on to get to the quarterfinals and lost to me, seven. Uh, in that second tournament. Uh, he comes from the banks of a famous Italian river and lives in a beautiful Italian house in an Italian city in Italy. He loves eating spaghetti and being attractive to women and only plays snooker a way of getting free spaghetti and letting women see his bum. Mamma mia, my pizza is ready. That's his nickname, um, his uh, catchphrase. His nickname is Mamma mia. So his, his, his nickname and his catchphrase are very similar. So they'll be play they'll be playing off and we'll talk about motorcycling Mimi thirty four and uh, Northern Irish Mimi six when we get to their round. But it's uh, extremely exciting, I have to say. One 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 none one none. He's played one one none one one. That's what he's done. Uh, so how are we doing? We've got one hundred and eighty six people in. That's not bad. That's getting back to uh, lockdown one levels. You know, I would like to see this take off and be the the biggest sporting event of all time. Oh, Chort, if you go to chortle.com or chortle.co.uk, let's check which one it is. Uh, chortle.co.uk, uh, they're currently uh, asking for nominations for lockdown legend. 
Uh, so if you want to nominate any of the me's or me, uh, you have to give your reasons for why you think whoever you've chosen is the best. But uh, if you can be asked to do that, why not? Might get an award. That's all I've got from Chortley's Internet Awards. What about my book? Why are you nominating books this year? Um, to do that, let's play. Let's play some. Let's play some snooker. I just got an email. Just check what that is. Oh, Apple Music. Apple Music have emailed me. They're always on. They're always on at me. They're always trying to be my mate. Um. Right, let's do it. So uh, we got me 25, Samuel Beckett me. I can see he's just sitting down now just to join in. Uh, so let's see how he feels he's going to do in this frame of it's 20 minutes in. I think we started a bit late. That's OK. Uh, he's just sitting down. He's still just sitting down now. Richard, hello. We're born astride the grave. The light glimmers for a second. And then we're born in the grave. And then we that what I'm saying is we're born and done. We die, don't we, straight away? It seems to be only uh, Samuel Beckett quote you you know. Uh, also, it doesn't feel true to me. If life feels super long to me, you know, it feels like you're born and life goes on and on and on, and then maybe you're dead and then you don't know anything about it. But you know, I don't know any different. Life seems to have been ter terrifyingly long to me. Well, Rich, you, do, you're, you don't have the soul of a poet. Try again, fail again, fail better. Oh, you do know that you know two quotes. Um, let's go. We can't. Why not? We're waiting for Godo. So, you know, I know quite a few. Yeah, you're good. Mainly waiting for Godo based quotes. Good play. I like end game. That's my, uh, when I'm at the end of the game of play snooker, I think this is a bit like end game. What happens in end game? Is that definitely Beckett or is that Tom Stoppard? Bet it's Beckett. It's, um, it's I like the one that's just a mouth. I like the one with the bloke in the, the dustbin. I like uh, tapes last crap. I like that. <laughs> Don't you laughing at your own jokes? Yeah, I made a little joke. I like crap's last tape. You're quite a boring character. I like Samuel Beckett. If you think that's boring, uh, he's to me. He's the Irish me, Samuel Beckett, and the French me. There isn't one of those. I know. And also the English me. Not sure. You, not sure we can all claim claim broken English and French. Yeah, I, I can't tell you much about uh, Samuel Beckett that I don't know already. Yeah, we know we've got, we've got a similar knowledge of Samuel Beckett, but it's nice that you like him, and it's nice that you're playing in honour of him. And uh, I hope that uh, somehow the bleakness of uh, of existence doesn't get through to you. Good luck uh, in getting through this. I can't even remember. What, you, know, you won one, and then you lost against the other Sam Beckett. That was quite. Quite good. Uh, all right, go away. And here comes Italian me. Mamma mia, where's my pizza? I expect he'll say he's just sitting down now. Oh, mamma mia, Richard. Hello, it is me, Italian me. Oh, me, I am me 21. 21. 21. And uh, I love the pizza, I love the pasta, I love the salad with mozzarella and tomatoes and the basil. It's the same as my Italian flag. Mamma mia, I can't wait to play. And of course, uh, just for people who haven't seen uh, this before, uh, there is, I am part of talent according to uh, those, one of those DNA websites. Uh, I, the only bit of me that isn't solidly British um, British or Irish is um, a little bit of a t northern Italian in me so this is Mamma Mia you can tell right Richard because here I am and uh, my, uh, how do you say in uh, English my uh, accent is uh, very good so you didn't know how to say that in English no I had to think and then I, would, I asked my how you say in English um, could you say it in Italian? Oh, of course I could, Richard. I'm Italian, so un biglietto e una guida per favore. Sounds good. Un dos tres quattro quattro cinque nove dieci. You're good. You're good. I mean, you got me. I, I'm I'm flummoxed. 
Uh, io sono Italiano. Good. You're very good. You got Io sono Anglitario. Oh dear, <laughs> Richard, your uh, your Italian. Uh, how do you say? Is uh, not too good, uh, and the accent. Uh, I have to say, is uh, laughably, uh, slightly offensive. So, where is my pizza, Mamma Mia? And are you are you looking forward to representing Italy often in sport? Italy. I mean, in football they do quite well, but in rugby, I know I've noticed they're not very good, are they? And so far in snooker, you've not been great, but you are you're on a roll. You've you you've won one in a row. Oh, Mamma Mia! Yes, I beat this. Uh, who did I beat? Uh, I forget his name now because you were all you. Inglese is uh, competitive me and you know when you think about how competitive competitive me is then you will mamma mia uh, well you know I think playing snooker is a bit like a war isn't it and um oh come on Richard you are better than this you do not need to make the jokes uh, like uh, the white flag is the flag of Italy we do not need that come on we're all friends now we had a little misunderstanding Come on, think about Garibaldi and all the that was good. The father, he went round. It. Think about the the Roman Empire. Are we gonna just carry on with this? Since I'd have to say the four characters on this week, are, I don't think are that good. So I'm glad two of them are getting knocked out. I would favour you over the Samuel Beckett me. Well, Mamma Mia, thank you very much, Richard. Uh, uh, how do you say? Um, I uh, don't know how to say it. Just say it. Say the thing you want to say in Italian, and I'm sure someone in the chat room will uh, will translate it. Just, uh, just. Oh no, Richard, that is I. How do you say when you are in the home of the friend? You must. Uh, how you say? Be in the how. <laughs> the how you say? How you say? So, I will. How you say? We should have made how you say your catchphrase, shouldn't we? Not Mamma Mia. And look, in hindsight, Mamma Mia, where's my pizza? Seems almost patronisingly xenophobic. Uh, how you say it would have been. Uh, Shall we uh, write a little uh, number one hit together, Richard? What's the matter, you? Hey, how you say? Uh, how you say uh, your face? So you can just do you shut up your face with how you say uh, your face. How you say uh, your face? Good. Say, bonne bella pizza. Cappuccino. <laughs> Great. Well, I can't wait to see these two uh, fighting it out on the old green board. And I don't have to wait, luckily, because they're going to do it right now. Um, oh, I've lost the I've lost the whole twi twi Twitch page. I'm going to bring that back up just in case anyone's... Uh, uh, the broadcast indicate this is a channel intended for mature audiences. Um, okay, got to sign in again for some reason. Uh, it needs me to. Te uh, I can't be bothered with that. Uh, I can see chat room here. Uh, we didn't mention spicy meat meatball Don Mio. Didn't do any of that. Let's get on to the hockey. Let's see if everything's working. Uh, over to commentator one, commentator two in the gut, Jan. <laughs> in the Jipples Arena, yeah. Richard. Hello. It's good to be here in the Gert Jan Nijapool's arena and uh, looking pretty messy around the uh, old green board today. Hopefully you can hear me okay. The microphone slightly precariously uh, onto uh, my, the sweatshirt the players have chosen to wear today. Um, Let's see some snooker. It's uh, Samuel Beckett, me, me, 25 to break. He's uh, finding it difficult to get to the board. Uh, referee one has set up the table quite nicely, although the reds have spread a little and uh, he didn't put the white in the right place. Uh, but me, 25. Samuel Beckett, me, does well. Me, 21. Bante, un, as they say in France. He's off the mark. Italiano, me. He's going for the pink. It's a tricky shot. He's managed to hit the pink, and I think that's as much as he could have hoped for. It seems dark here, comparatively. But he's off the mark. Calculating, calculating. It might be just because they turn those lights down to make it work. Uh, me, 25, zero. Me, 21, one. 
it. So Italian, first blood to the Italians is often the case. Will they stay the course? Oh, a bad shot from Samuel Beckett, me. He'll write a play about that. And here comes Italiano, me. Oh, trying to pull the ball back. He's flown off the table, surrendered, given four points away. And suddenly he was looking so far ahead. Now it's 4-1 to Samuel Beckett, me. He's not used to winning. He's just whacked everything. And he's, oh, beautiful double hit on the red there. I saw that. I hope you saw that too. That was the kind of play that only a playwright could hope for. He thinks that black will go down. Is he right? No, he was wrong. Uh, he gets a point, but he gives away seven points. And he's gone in off on the black. It was a shame to go for the black. I thought he was a bit foolish. But Italiano me gets... And he gets... It's like a free Cornetto for him as he comes in. And bang, Italiano me. Oh, is he snooking himself though? Has he managed to snook himself from every single colour he has? He's going for the yellow, sensible, because it's a low scoring ball. He's missed it entirely. He's going to hit the pink. Oh, so Italiano me gets one, <laughs> gives away six. And these two are leapfrogging each other in terms of the uh, fouls they're giving to each other. It's 11-9, uh, I'm uh, computer voice just off line for a second there. Here comes, uh, this is Samuel Beckett, me. He's whacked it. It hasn't worked out for him this time. Italiano me, here he comes. Oh, he's hit that much too straight. What, is, what a shame. He could have been away there. I think he was just looking at black, thinking what can he do? Here's Samuel Beckett, me. Uh, I think he was trying to plant there. It didn't work out for him. Italiano. Parlez-vous Italiano? No, seri. And here comes Samuel Beckett, me. And that's the nicest shot of the night so far. He's going to risk the black. This could be an in-off situation. Oh, beautifully played. Beautifully played by Samuel Beckett, me. I think it was him. He's on the break of eight. It's the highest break of the night. Can he make it nine? Oh, that was a pretty easy shot. Has he gone in off? Oh, so Samuel Beckett, me gets eight, gives away four. That's pretty good by terms of this game. Calculating, he's back. Calculating, calculating, me 25, 19, me 21, 13. And it's a little bit of Latin loving needed now. That was not a good shot from the Italian. And here comes Samuel Beckett, me. Difficult bridge, and he's not done well with it, but he at least didn't make a foul there. Italiano, me. That, oh, what a shot. What a bad luck. It's right over the pocket there. He did the double kiss again, and Samuel Beckett, he's born astride the grave. He's potted two reds. What a beautiful, beautiful play from the fan of the Irish playwright. He's gone for the black. Not hit it well. Two points. Take Samuel Beckett me up to 21. And I think we're starting to see who the best player is here. Oh, oh, an Italiano me. So unlucky there. The red ball jingled and jangled in the pocket. Like, uh, what's going on in the news? Uh, he's given away seven points, so don't, let's not forget that because he did pop the black. Uh, and then the, bla and the black ball went down. And uh, it was it jingled and jangled in the pocket like um, the corona response team when they heard about the South African uh, the variant and were worried. That's what that was like. So here comes... Samuel Beckett, me. He's uh, he's in the ascendant here. Lovely pot. He could have just potted that straight, but he chose to bounce it off another red ball to go in. Can he make it a break of eight? You know he can. And once again, it it just bounces off the centre pocket. Just beautifully timed. And can he make it a break of nine this time? It looks easy. Ah, oh, it looked really easy. And he's done. No, he hasn't done it. It's a break of eight. 
But surely enough now, gaggly tink, gaggly tink, me 25, 36, me 21, 13. Well, all I can say is there's a few balls left on this table. And Italian me has got a very easy red. He's potted it. He's brought the black slightly off the rails. He's going to go for the black. He's missed it. Is he going to go in off? No. Well, that bumps him up to 14. Samuel Beckett me won't mind that. And Controversy just smashes that as he potted one. Feels like one went down, but I don't think it did. Um, Italian me, he needs to get a colour with this red. He hasn't even got the red. It was an easy shot. And I think Samuel Beckett me is definitely the one playing the better snooker. Although not on that occasion, that was like Italian me had taken over for a second. Here comes Italian me. Oh, very nearly goes in off again. Luckily survives. Did he hit the pink on that? Who knows? Samuel Beckett me. He's didn't even look down at that and that was quite a tricky shot. Italiano me. He seems just frustrated, but has he got a snooker? Not, not quite. Samuel Beckett me. Italiano me. No, I mean, he was hopeful to try and pot that, but Samuel Beckett could get this. I'm going to say Samuel Beckett isn't the real Samuel Beckett. Oh, oh, what an amazing shot. I don't think anyone could have predicted that the red ball would, I don't even know what it did, but it snuck up past the black, which is right over the pocket. And then popped in and look at that. Superb play from Samuel Beckett. Me pots the black, which I think will have to go on the pink spot. The pink's on the black spot and he's nudged the yellow, but I think he'll have to try and double this yellow if he wants to get it in. Nearly does it as well. Eight points to Samuel Beckett Me. He's now on 44 against 14. He has just snookered Italiano Me. And no one would blame Italiano Me if he just threw in the towel now, said, Mamma Mia, where's my pizza? And oh. Pretty astonishing shot there from, he tried to double it off the difficult bottom cushion that doesn't really rebound in any proper way and somehow managed to pot the cue ball into that centre pocket. And here comes Samuel Beckett me. I mean, this is too easy. He's not used to victory, not used to his life going so well. Is he going to follow through? No, he's potted the yellow. The green is gettable, it's tricky and he hasn't got it. It was too tricky. He's gone in off, so that's some hope. Two points to Samuel Beckham, me. Four points to Italiano, me. Calculating, calculating, me. 25, 50, me. 21 is on 18. 18 and 50. There's 32 points between these two players. And Italiano, me. Better start realising there's only 25 points on the table. Uh, he seems to finally realise that. Nearly pots the pink. Leaves the green in quite a good position, but will Samuel Beckett me fall for his trap and pot the pink? No, he's potted the green. Has he snookered himself? He has. Let's see if we can get the brown. Oh, he's hit the brown, but gone in off the brown. So even though he'd managed to get out the snooker, he still went in off. So Italiano, uh, he got, what happened? That was Samuel Beckett mate, getting three and giving away four, right? I think that's right. So that's one point closer, but equally one more colour off the table. Gaggly dink, gaggly dink. Me 25, 53. Me 21, 22. That should be a song in the hip parade. Doopy doopy doo, doopy doo. Stop that computer voice, just do the scores. 53, 22. There's 31 between these two now, 22 on the table. And this is Italian me. He has to try and get a snooker here. And does that by saying, the, oh, that's not bad actually. That's a pretty good attempt. Samuel Beckett me thinks he can just snip that brown. He's correct. And he's potted it by an incredible cannon off the black. Nearly pots the blue, which would have been another amazing shot. I think it's over. But uh, you know what they say about the Italians, they never surrender. 
And, uh, oh, he's potted the pink now. It's going very badly. This could be the one of the highest scores, defeats. Certainly this tournament, Samuel Beckett, me, I think, can confidently say his name is in the second round. Ita he misses the blue. Italian me. Oh, nearly pots the blue. Samuel Beckett, me. Being made to play for it and not... That I'm glad. Italian me may have been snooker. It's a beautiful snooker. And it's... Oh, Italian me. I didn't think the angles there would work at all, but he... He predicted the, the unpredictable and managed to hit that blue. Sammy Beckett, me misses the blue. Oh, Italian me's gone in off. I think it might be better for him just to give up. It's getting embarrassing now. Calculating, calculating. Me, 25, 68. Me, 21, 22. 68, 22. And... Uh, This completely snookered Sammy Beckett me, so he can just hit the black and use it as a blue, and he cleverly uses that to snooker. But oh, me 19 nearly pots the blue again, forgetting, I think, for a second. Oh, please, someone put this out of the misery. It's me 25 trips over his own sock that isn't put on properly. And uh, I think Italian me is giving up. He's just potted the blue, he's just missed the pink. But uh, well, he's gonna let uh, he's gonna let Samuel Beckett me have the glory. I think of, of possibly getting thirteen more points. There's six of them, beautifully on the black. It's a tricky black, but it's all over. And Samuel Beckett me gets thirteen points to end on, taking him up to a phenomenal eighty-one point scored against twenty-seven. One of the Whitewashers of the series, 87-21. I don't know what commentator two thinks about it. He's just popped out actually for a fag. I said, do you want to stay here? Just while they're playing, he said, no, I'm going to have a fag. Goodbye. Back to you, Richard, in the Gert Jans Nipples Arena here at the commentary box. 1-0, Samuel Beckett, me, comfortably through to the next round. But remember, he won the first round match in the last tournament and then lost in the second round. So he won't be playing me 31 this time, though. So, you know, let's see. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, I've been informed by referee one that he'll... Um, he's apologised for not setting up in the background before. He, he's going to be setting up in the background where we do the, the various um, interviews. Uh, let's quickly talk to Italiano me. I'm sad to see him go. Because, you know, he was the only one of these four, I think, with any... Oh, Northern Irish me's all right as well. He's got a bit of character. How are we doing, Italiano me? Well, how do you say, Richard? Uh, I lost the, the game of snooker. We don't really play the snooker in Italy. So, you know, I was nice to get through to the first round. And how you say, not do very well. I got 27 points. And most of those were due to the mistakes of me 25 and I'm going to eat the cornetto now I'm going to have some spaghetti after I've had the cornetto and then I'm getting on a gondola and I'm going to put on a funny hat I'm going to sing some opera and I'm going to uh, get some Christians in a big coliseum and make them fight against uh, vicious animals I hope you have a good day, everyone. Sorry to all my Italian fans that I didn't win. <laughs> I didn't win. And uh, I see you in the next tournament if I'm allowed to play, which I might not be allowed to because of how bad I am at snooker. Goodbye. Well, that was, uh, someone said, sounds like the king of the world. But um, I think this is a very, but that's, I'm the king of the world. Who's the king of the world? That's me. And it's a very different uh, voice. So um, that was just my impression, the king of the world. Um, he's off to have sex with uh, some women and do some art and stuff, do some sculptures. Uh, <laughs> someone's saying that's Rich's worst ever accent. I'll wait till the next frame is all I'll say. Let's talk to uh, Samuel Beckett, me, me 25. 
he's just sitting down now. Hi, Richard. Yeah. Um, well, I'm I'm filled with angst at my victory because you know, for every winner, there must also be a loser. We're all f punching down, aren't we, in this world? And it makes me sad that even though I have ruined the night of another human being, I feel a sense of triumph. And uh, reckon this is the sort of thing Samuel Beckett would say. I reckon he would think things like this. This is. I wish I could have met him. I think me and him would have had a lot to share. You, him, and Gandhi. Yeah, I think we could have shared a lot. Uh, I could have given him some pointers. I, I'd have said, let's not call it God. Oh, it sounds a bit too much like God. It, makes, it looks like you're waiting for God. That's a sitcom, mate. Come on. Come up with your own titles for stuff. And also, you know, if it is waiting for God, don't make it so obvious. So you think you're a bit better than Sammy Beckett. I would give him some notes as I'm saying. I couldn't have written the whole thing. But I'd have said, yeah, come on. Why, don't they, why not get Godo at the end? We've been waiting for him. Get him in. First rule of theatre. Well, I'm glad that the teenage me thought so deeply about such, such a stuff. But I'm glad we're going to see you again, actually. Uh, good luck in the next round. Congratulations. Thank you. It means a lot to me that you... I don't really like uh, this sort of light-hearted... I like stuff with more meaning. This self-playing snooker is a very deep and multi-layered thing, you know, mate. It's not just a man playing snooker against himself. It's about so much. It's about the human condition. It's about how our greatest battle is against ourselves. It's about how sport is a parody of sport, and it, mm, uh, it does not. It's not as good as Waiting for God. Oh, I mean, that, if you've only seen one play, yeah, sure, it's not as good as one the one play you've seen. But uh, you know, in my, I think in the future when I'm gone, people will understand. People will give this the the dignity and the gravitas and the understanding I think it deserves. Anyway, let's meet the players for the next show. We've got Motorcycling Me 34. He's a new character. He played in the preliminary rounds. Uh, he's he very sadly actually ah oh, heartbreakingly beat Me 20 left-handed Me, who everyone had written off, and left-handed Me was I believe just like a pink ball away from winning the whole thing. And then me thirty four beat him, which is devastatingly unhappy about him. And uh, then me six, Northern Irish me, incredibly bad player actually. Um, I don't know how he escaped. I think just by being a low number, he escaped being in the first round. He's played two one zero, lost two. Um, he's won one frame in in those matches and lost both of his matches. Uh, this uh, album says he's going to his. Uh, he's, he but he takes defeat well by going to his opponent's house and marching up and down, banging on a drum. That's uh, his nickname is the Bowler Hatted Orangeman. If you want to know how he did, um, me six. Uh, he lost uh, two one to me fourteen. Oh no, no to me seven. I think yeah. Uh, uh, in the first one, it was the it was the Irish um, Northern Irish. This is. Uh, Republic of Ireland and in the next round me six can't even see him here I'm sure he was there some oh there he is right at the top he lost 2-0 to me 18 uh, the oversharing me who was then knocked out in the next round by me 32 angry me who then won the tournament no lost to me me Sam Beckett the other Sam Beckett me do you care Let's meet him. Here we go. He's just sitting down. I can see him. He's just taking off his some of his motorcycle clothing. He's just lit on his helmet. He's just put his helmet down. So I'll talk to him now. Hello, Richard. Good to see you. Sure love um, snooker, but not as much as I love motorcycling. That's me making the hat. Let me go by the, making the old machine go by turning the old handles. I've been around the world with you, McGregor. Upwards, downwards, sideways. And I uh, take all the adverts for herring shoes because people think I'm you and I'm not. I'm me, 34. That's who I am. I look a bit like you, but it's just because I'm a part of you. But I'm doing better than you. Mm, thanks to my... You wish, bet you wish you could motorcycle. Yeah, that's what all this character is. Oh, I sure love motorcycling, Rich. Motorcycling around. Some people like cycling on an own bike, not me. I say, why pedal around when you can on a bike? It doesn't need to be pedaled with all an engine and stuff in it. That's my catchphrase. Interesting, I don't think it is your catchphrase in the... Oh, they haven't... you're not in the book. That's why you haven't got a catchphrase in the book. It would have to be, but I don't think it would fit. Um, do you think... How do you fancy your chances? Rich, 
Richard. Oh. I might have been talking the wrong way around there. Uh, Richard, I been um I beat left handed me. I mean really left handed me is uh, is generally considered the worst player due to him not actually being left handed. Is he rich though? I mean he did very, very well against you. Absolutely heartbreaking that he was knocked out and still not over it. It would have been amazing to see him progress further in the He needed to go out, Richard, and I just let him out of charity, I'm a nice guy. I let him do quite well, but I won't be... There'll be no charity against this Northern Irish guy. I cycle around Northern Ireland with you McGregor, and I tell you, every single person I met there was a fucking cunt. Uh, and I stand by that. That's me, 34, speaking there. I, um, I've um, i met some uh, OK people in Northern Ireland. Nah. They're all bad people, and um, they should get over themselves. Well, we've certainly uh, we're, we're we're creating some tension here for the uh, for the actual match. I don't know how me six is going to feel about that. Uh, let's see. Let's see if he's just sitting down now. He's just they just swap places. There's been a bit of pushing around and some shouting. Um, me six, how are you feeling about that, Richard? I want to say that I do not recognise the authority. What, of that woman from the counselling? No, of the Ewan McGregor bloke. It's not Ewan McGregor. His mate. I do, he can't go on the motorcycle. And furthermore, let me say this. That he has been very rude about Northern Irish people. I agree with him about all the Catholic people. They are all cunts. But us proper Northern Irish people... In our bowler hats and wearing orange, we are decent people who go around banging drums and stuff. We, what we believe, what is it you believe? I'm not entirely sure. I'm not sure any of the, us are anymore, but we've been doing it for a long time. We're going to carry on doing it until Northern Ireland is back in the UK. I mean, it, I understand why you would say that now, but it is always been I mean not always but for a while has been in the it's sort of the problem in it I mean it, do you think the EU is, do, you, do you think they're just gonna the island's just gonna unite no not while I have blood in my body not while I have a bowler hat and a drum I mean this is politically uh, insensitive <laughs> even by the the standards of... I mean, there are many people in Northern Ireland... I mean, I'm not saying that this Northern Irish me is representative of Northern Ireland. I am! How are you? His accent's really good, though. Thank you! I'm doing it really well. Thank you, Richard! And furthermore, uh, I will beat the motorcycle guy at Snooker. May, I mean, maybe you just spent more time doing that and just getting annoyed with people who drive motorcycles and seeing if you better them at Snooker. Then, uh, you know, maybe the world would be a better place. I just think, uh, you know, not sure much of the UK is going to be hanging together in 10 years' time. And what I say is if Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland become one country again, as, you know, I, I don't want to come... It's a difficult argument. I don't want to come down on either side, but that's obviously what should happen. Um... If to just look at it objectively, a fucking three year old child could see it. Um, are you gonna are we gonna carry on having a Northern Irish me and an Irish me, or will you conglomerate into one? It, I will never surrender, I will never become. I, I'm Irish, but um, oh, I don't know. I don't, uh, you, the, the question has become too complex for my understanding of the issue. Well, I wish you'd said that five minutes ago because you know this bit could go out online somewhere without any of the other stuff around it and um yeah i could be in a lot of trouble and it's not even me saying it, it's you saying well i'm going to win a snooker richard today i'm not a loser and the conservative government are giving me two billion pounds in order to practice snooker so that i can win I, whatever it is, Northern Ireland is better than the Republic of Ireland. Good. Well, we've got that sorted out. So we're fighting against between the two. Um, hopefully they'll just become lovely. Me seven. Everyone loves uh, uh, Irish people, don't they? They love them. 
So, um, very good though. Let's uh, hopefully the referee want to set up in the interim. He said he would. Uh, he said he'd definitely do it this time. Let's see who wins out of these. <laughs> I am sorry. I'm very. I just would like to apologise for everything I've done so far with this uh, format, and preemptively apologise for the stuff that will also happen in the future. I really seriously hope Me Six is knocked out, because <laughs> you know this could be career-ending. Richard, oh, sad to say that uh, referee one just been called away to uh, a meeting in the office of the referees, and he's just now coming back to. Uh, He's just setting the scoreboard back to zero. Here he's, he's got the pink out. But, you know, it's good in a way. It's an honour to see a professional referee, how he sets up the snooker board. You say this every week, mate. Oh, commentator two's back. Um, you say that every week. You say how great it is to see a referee set up a table, but it's not that great. It's just It's like a bloke walking around a table, and you say it every week as if it's not something that happens every week, but it does happen every week, so it's not an honour. It's just something that happens every week. So just fucking get a grip. I'm just trying to cover, mate, while this embarrassing bit happens. And, you know, I'm just doing the best I can with the material that is available to me. So please, look, we've got a politically charged situation here with a man spouting off about hating everyone in Northern Ireland. And there's a Northern Irish man here. There might be some Northern Irish people watching who will probably be furious. So let's just get back to the snooker. Me 34 versus me 6. Me 34 to break. Motorcycling me. And uh, he does his... Uh, oh, yeah, that's his catchphrase. He always does that at the start of every frame. You might have forgotten last time. Uh, oh, oh, he's gone in off. I thought he hadn't gone in off, but then it jumped, bounced back, and he did go in off. And Northern Ireland's ahead. Good news for anyone who loves hearing Richard Herring attempting to... Talk about Northern Ireland without really knowing anything about it. Here is that Northern Irish me. Oh, it was an aggressive shot. So aggressive. Not only did he pop the red, he potted the cue ball as well. So it's even Stevens for all at this early stage. One mistake each. Uh, the cue ball's gone down in every single turn so far. Let's see how motorcycling me does now. He's going for a tricky red. Misses it, but pots the... Oh, beautiful pot of the other red on the other side, and I didn't see that coming. But I think he has snooker himself pretty effectively. Pretty effectively. He's going for the blue. Oh, what a shot. And I think he's got a snooker there. So motorcycling me jumps ahead. It's calculating, calculating me. Motorcycling me. I think he's number 34. What? Five points. Me, six... Ah, oh, that's all wrong on there. You got that wrong, Andy. Me six four. He's only got four me six, hasn't he? I think it's five four to to me thirty four. Uh, and uh, he's got a snooker. Here comes me six. It's a pretty easy snooker to get out of, but it's good to be snookered so soon. He's got out of it nearly. Sends the pink towards the thing, but it doesn't. Me thirty four. And he's going down again, trying to get another snooker. Has he done it? He's got the cue ball right on the bolt cushion. Me six. I know, he's not a snooker. Oh, what a pot. I'm not sure he was even aiming at that ball. He didn't even seem to look down. Oh, and me six gets the highest break of the frame so far. Third highest of the night. He's potted the pink and uh, I don't think it's going to end here. Oh, it has ended there. He missed a very, very easy uh, red into the centre pocket. He gets still gets a break of seven. Calculating, calculating. Me, 34, five. Me, six, 11. And here comes me, 34. He's got an easy red, but both of them are struggling to get these balls into the centre pockets. He's done it. He might have to go for the blue here. Oh, he had a good crack at that. Unlucky, but he's up to six. It's six plays 11 with Northern Irish me at the hockey now. Oh, oh. And uh, me, 34. He did a fart. I, I'm pretty sure I heard a fart as that, as that uh, ball was struck. I hope that didn't get picked up on the... Studio mics. 
Oh, me 34 gets one, but pots the black by mistake after going for the green. Uh, it's seven points to Northern Irish me and uh, difficult political situation looks like it's going to be exacerbated as the score is now seven plays 18 with Northern Irish me at the hockey and this could be a clearance here, I think. He's no missed, he's missed the red. So calculating me 34. Oh, did he? I think he missed that red entirely. He's given away six points because he's hit the pink and me 34 really falling apart here. He's on seven, me six is on four and he's basically just been given a free red as well, which he pots with a plum. And he's going for the blue. He's missed it badly, but it doesn't really matter. It's calculating, calculating, me 34, seven, me six, 25, and me six, who's never won a frame. Playing me 34, who's only on here as a qualifier. Oh, 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 comedy of errors there. Um, who was that though? <laughs> uh, he missed everything, which, which, I wonder who that was who just, anyone got any ideas? Let's have a look and see in the chat room. I've completely lost track of where I was. And me 34 was the first one. Anyone know who just went in off there? See if we can get any. No one in the chat room's listening. Me 34 in off says uh, Andy McH and I will trust him on that. So me 34, that's four more points. That's what I thought as well. Four more points to me six. 29 plays seven, me six. Doing Northern Ireland proud. Though some of them might not want to identify with his politics. But let's leave the politics behind. Me 34 has a chance to put some points on the board. He's got one. That might make him feel a little bit better. He's going for the black, I think. This is impossible. Oh, nearly goes in off again. But uh, he bumps up to eight. 29 plays eight. Surely this is in the bag, but I've said that before. It just seems like that Northern Irish me is playing better. And look at that, just to prove me right, he pots a beautiful, beautifully judged pot into the centre pocket. Misses a pretty easy blue. Has he gone in off? He has, and this it's game on. One point to me six, five points to me 34. 13 plays 30. Two reds left on the table, sorry, on the board. None of them very gettable. Me 34 to play. Oh, oh, I mean, he missed that red and then nearly managed to pot it. And I think he might have snooked, he almost got a snooker. Me six. He almost goes in off. Me 34, he's playing for his life. Oh, ooh, nearly pops the black again. But this time, no, it isn't quite a snooker. Me six. He definitely hit the blue first. He was impeded by a, a box behind him. He's given five points away, an unforced error. And me 34, 10 points he's got from two errors. Oh, this is a pretty easy red. And me 34 will sn oh, No, he hasn't. They both missed an easy red. Well, I don't know what to think. M me 34. No, misses an easy red. Me six. This is an easy red. Me 34. Does just rub plays rubbish. Me six. Can he finish this off? Oh, it jumps out of the pocket. Just can only think of politically charged things. Me 34. He's got a pot. Oh, he's gone in off. Of course he has. Almost impossible in off. Into the centre pocket. Gives four valuable points. To me six, calculating, calculating, me 34, 18, me six, 34, and it's me six on the final red. It's an easy red. Ooh, he nearly messes it up, but he gets it in. He's, he's going to go for the brown, because the yellow's probably gettable. He's got the brown, he's gone in off, oh my God. What is wrong with these cunts? 
He gets a point, he gives away four points. And I would say this is anyone's game. He's gone in off and he's left the yellow, which he was hoping to pot next. Very available, it's 22, plays 35. Me, 34, should get this yellow. He's fucking missed it, trying to come up for the green, which he did really well at, but fuck me, he's a shit player. Me, six, also misses the yellow. Me, 34, I mean, if that goes in, that'll be, oh, the, luckily the camera of the table takes it away. It's a snooker, it's a very good snooker. Me, six. Oh, brilliant, now it almost pots it as well. What an amazing, I wish you could see that, people listening. Me, 34. I mean, there's been some dire play today, it has to be said. Me, six. Oh, I mean, I think he was aiming at a different side of the ball. Me, 34. It almost pushes that into the use to stop. Me six. No one seems to know what they're doing. Me 34 now at the hockey. No, I mean, they're just batting it around. Me six. Can he finish this off? He's got the yellow. Beautifully. Where's the brown? Oh, for fuck's sake. When did the brown go down? When did the brown go down and why did nobody tell me? We're not going to have to go through all this again. Has it just gone down? Was it, has it just gone down or is it, is it voided? Oh, and everyone's just laughing at me. We're going to have to start this one again. The brown's been off for ages. Oh, what a disaster. I was looking forward to a nice early night's sleep. Referee one. Uh, so, somewhat in the doghouse for not having noticed that a bit earlier. It's my job, I'm a commentator. He's resetting up the board. It is a little honoured to see how a professional referee sets up a board after making a terrible error. Um, completely void, doesn't matter what that score was. Um, this is very, very bad news for uh, Northern Irish me. And really for all of us. <laughs> um, we'll start again. It's as if that never happened. I mean, it could have gone either way. And I was going to say earlier in the commentary that really I thought uh, Motorcycle and Me's only hope was for, uh, for something like that to happen. And if I'd said that, you would have all thought it was a, a setup. But it was not a setup. We would never do anything like that on purpose, believe me. Here comes me 34, take two of this frame. Let's hope the snooker's a bit better. No, it's, well, that's nice. He started it as he started the last one. He's gone enough. Four points to me six. Now, if me six can just make a pot of ball and then follow through, and it's four all, then I think that's fair. Oh. Well, me six has not lived up to his part of the bargain. He's potted a red and not gone in off. He's going for the blue. And I can see he's angry. He didn't pot that blue, but uh, very nearly did. And me 34, been handed a reprieve. What will he do with it? Not a lot by the looks of it. He's a shit, shit player. And I think we've opened this too far by going up to 40. And I think we're seeing that now. Me six has potted a red. He's potted a green. Oh, this is nice to see. He's snooking himself from against all the fucking reds on the table. He's got a break of four and he's about to give away. Oh no, oh, he went in off. He scored four, <laughs> given away four, just when it looked like he was just starting to play a bit of proper snooker. Calculating, calculating, me 34, four, me six, nine. And me six, sorry, me 34, given a chance here. He's potted that red. He's got a chance. And he's, oh, playing tactically, but not very well. But anyway, he's uh, tried to get a snooker there, but I don't think he's done it. He's up to five. Me six, who I'm now starting to prefer to me 34. He's just whacked it. Oh, he's potted red, but gone in off at the same time. What a bit of bad luck. And that 
moves it to nine all. He took a chance and it was quite spectacular in off again into the center pocket. Me, 34, has gone in off. Oh, they're so bad at snooker, these two. Uh, I don't think we've seen, I don't think we've seen two players as bad as this. Remember, this is a player who only just beat a left-handed player playing a player who's never played before. Uh, it is me six to play, I believe. He nearly misses those reds entirely. Me 34 has been given a lifeline and he's missed it. Both players, I think, just fed up by having to carry on playing. Uh, me six. Nicely out of the snooker, but he's set up me 34. Who pots the red and doesn't worry too much about what he's going to get onto. He's going to go for the black. Always a risk. Me 34 is now on 10. Me 6 is on 13. It's me 6 to play. This is anybody's game. Oh, that was a lovely shot. That was the first. And it was like from a man who didn't even get down to look at that one. He's coming down for this one. He wants this black. And he hasn't got it. He's quite badly missed it. Me 6 up to 14. Me 34 and 10. Much closer this time round. Oh, oh. The cannoning around like a cannon. Me 6. Oh, and that jingled and jangled in the pocket. But did not go down. Me 34. Pots a red. Going for the pink. He's trying to double it. Fails. Was that me six or me 34? Oh, for fuck's sake, I'm so tired. What does Andy McH think? I have a feeling that was, I feel like that was me 34, but then I was going to give it to me six. Who potted that red ball, Andy McH? Was anyone watching? Let's find out. 34 point to potted that ball. That's what I thought. So 34 gets one. It's 11 plays 14, me six to play. Oh, he's missed. He's missed entirely and he's hit the blue. And suddenly, me 34 is, for the first time in the lead, he's also snookered. He can play any color as a red. He's going for that blue. He's potted it. Oh, nearly goes in off. Me 34 suddenly in the ascendant. No one thought it was possible. He's going for the pink. He's got a beam right behind him and did pretty well with that, given very nearly put that pink, it could still go in. Oh, calculating, calculating, me 34, 17, me 6, 14, and me 6 is up, but he's snookered. Should get out of this one. Oh, and he hasn't. He hasn't, and this is it's going the other way this time, me 34, and there's gonna be people questioning this. There's gotta be, hasn't there? Me. Six was way ahead. Now me 34's way ahead. Me, me six. Oh, me six. Why well, couldn't you see that pink hanging over there? Me six has potted the pink. It wasn't time to pot color. It's given six points to me 34. Calculating, calculating. Me four, 27. Me six, 14. And uh, absolute shit show. Oh. Me 34, slightly difficult bridge, but he fucked it up. Me 6, at last he's got something. He's potted a red. He's going for the pink. Oh, and he's starting to concentrate again. And that was a beautiful shot. Can Me 6 pull this back? Whichever player gets into this next round, they are shit. Oh, for fuck's sake. Me six scores seven, but goes in off on the la on that was and gives away four, so he's an aggregate of three. A lot of balls going into that top pocket. Calculating, calculating. Me 34, 31. Me six, 21. There's 10 in it. It's me 34 to play. I don't think that red's going to go past that yellow. Well, nearly did, but it didn't. Me six. 
beautiful long range shot into the top pocket. The red's gone down. He's nearly trips over the green screen. He's got the brown. Me six playing for his career, for his life. He could be, if he doesn't win this, he will have played three and lost three. Oh dear me six. He's got a break of five. In terms of this tournament, that's pretty good. 31 plays 26. Me 34 is snookered. Oh, and he miscued and hit the blue. So really, it's, it's absolutely even Stevens and 31 all. And really, I don't know if anyone was trying to fix this, I don't know who they're trying to fix it for. Me six tries to do his little sneaky into the center pocket double. Me 34. And aware of an in off for once in his fucking life and didn't go for that. Me six. Oh, me six has gone in off. So me 34, now four points ahead. It's 35 plays 31. And this is looking exciting. This is looking good for me 34. I mean, really, can both of them get knocked out? Me 34, pots the red, pots the blue. He didn't really think about the fact that he's gonna have to go on to a, the yellow next. But he thinks he can get through those two balls. He's done it, he's got a break of six. He hasn't gone in off. This is tense stuff. It's gonna be fury, whatever happens here. It's 44, 41, plays 31. Me six. Has gone in off in quite spectacular fashion. How he managed that, I don't know. This is, it's pulling away this time. And me 34, who for my money has just played badly in both frames, is looking like he might go through. He's potted the yellow. He's gone too far on the green. Deliberately rolled that on. He's missed the green. He gets two points and gives away four points. It's 47 place 35. Really, absolutely the worst snooker we've ever seen. Me six has managed to get a snooker here. Me 34 gets out of the snooker for once. Me six. I just want this to be over. Me six had a fairly straight green, fucks it up. Me 34. Oh, jumped out of the pocket. Like Charlie Borman, so like Ewan McGregor jumping out and running out the door when Charlie Borman rings him up. He says, do you want to go around the world? Me six. In off, just another incredible in off. And he's potted the green, and he's potted the, no, he hasn't potted anything else. Um, it's now 51 plays 35. The green comes back out. Green, brown, blue, pink, yeah, it's all there. Knee 34 has a chance, surely. He pots the green. Can he just get like two balls in a row? He has done it. Can he get three balls in a row? Oh, did well with that centre pocket. He's got seven valuable points, and I think that might be it. 58 plays 35, 18 on the table. Me six, surely heading out of the rankings now. Will he even be in the next tournament? Me 34. Knows he just has to pot the blue. Me six. Oh, double kiss has probably been the kiss of death. Me 34 just finally putting some strokes together. When it matters, he's got five there. He's up to 63 against 35. Northern Irish me tried to end it all there, and not just on the snooker board. Me six, me 34. Me six is saying that's enough, he's had enough, and I can't blame him. It's 63 plays 35. <sighs> Motorcycling me. In quite controversial fashion is out. I'd like to see both of those players out 
and never be allowed to play again. I'd like to see referee one forced to, to resign. There's a lot of things I would like to say. Um, it's just, but I would like to apologise to anyone who's watched all the way through this far. Uh, there's numbers have stayed consistent. <laughs> I mean, I think all you've had from this from this uh, episode is the Gert Jan Nijipas arena. I think that's it. Gert Jan Nijipas arena. We've been sitting here for well over an hour. My wife has been waiting for me downstairs. Let's quickly talk to the players. Oh, God. Thanks. Sorry. Back to Richard. Thank you to Commentator 2 for his uh, joining in. Back to Richard. Yeah, let's get it over with quick. I, I would just, I'd like to apologise for everything in this. It's just gone, I've laughed at a dead man. And it's not funny to just laugh at people's names who mean something funny in another language. Though there was someone who lived in Shepherd's Bush, uh, no, in, the, in West London, uh, in... Uh, 1989, who was called Doc, Mr. Kunto. That one's all right to laugh at, but it's inappropriate. He died today. I'm sorry about the accents. I'm sorry about the politics, that misunderstanding of politics. I'm sorry about, I'm most sorry about how bad the snooker was. You would think some of these players have been playing for a long time. Admittedly, most likely me, it's only the second time he's played. Uh, Northern Irish me just plays and loses plays and loses for someone with such a low number in his name it's a fucking disgrace i'm going to talk to him first and i hope he is contrite well richard i will never be contrite i will never admit i've done anything wrong uh i am from belfast i am northern northern irish and what i will say is this i was winning in the first frame and this is a collusion. I will take this to the very top. I should be through to the next round. It is I who should be playing uh, the Samuel Beckett me. It's an, an, an Irish grudge match. It is wrong. What has happened? I'm getting my bowler hat and I'm walking around and banging my drum. And this will not stand. This will not stand. Good. The Northern Irish man there. I mean, it's, when it's Italian, it's kind of fun, isn't it? But just what's going on? Uh, let's talk to motorcycling me. How are you feeling? Well, you know, I thought I like motorcycling, Rich, but it turns out what I like is snookering around. I was uh, very much the best player out of those two. And I beat that one even more easily than I beat the left-handed player. So... I mean, I have to tell you, I think you're one of the worst players I've seen. I think the fact that you're progressing to the second round or something when such greats as me one, me two, um, so many of them he's at. Thankfully, me 11 still in them, but only because she hasn't played. Um, it's a disgrace that you're going through, and I'm disgusted. And it would, I would have felt the same if Northern Irish me had won, but I think well, there has to be some hard questions at referee one after this. And, and if he's fired into the sun, so be it. Well, Richard, I don't agree with you, but I'll be back. I will take on the Samuel Beckett me. I mean, I just want to say fucking hell. Samuel Beckett me against motorcycle me. So one of those two is going to be in, what, the quarterfinals, semifinals? Shitting hell. <sighs> Mate, it makes me want to give up this whole thing. It makes, makes me feel like this whole enterprise is just nonsense and meaningless. Well, you now have the Samuel Beckett me feels now, don't you? Yeah, I do, because he's part of me, as you are. So, get on. You're going to come? You're going to... Yeah, I'm looking forward to coming back. I might bring you and McGregor along to watch the next round. And uh, comfortable win, 63-35. No one can dispute it. I am the best at snooker out of me and me six. And I'm flying the flag for the me's in the late 30s. Me and me 38 were the only me's through from that. Who were the new me's? Oh, and me 37 as well. As well. So, there's quite a few of us, actually. But, you know, might meet in the final. If you get to the final, that would be the worst thing that's ever happened. Uh, thank you for listening and thank you for watching, people who managed to stay through this and watch this. Um, I don't know why the snooker's getting worse as the players are getting knocked out. It should get better, shouldn't it? And you'd think after the fourth one... Um, uh, you would think... So, look, 
come back next time. Uh, you will want to come back next week because it's me 11, female me, playing me 13, Somerset me, two of the giants of this game. Me 5, another low-numbered one you'd think would be a better character. Uh, you have to remember that they were drawn out of a hat and then some of them might have been lower down, actually, when we came to do them. Self-doubting me versus me 30, oversensitive me. Really some of the absolute worst characters from the me universe getting through and a lot of the best I just hope me 11 gets through I mean I know you do I know even Andy McH gets confused feelings about me 11 and I can't blame him um, so yeah we'll be back next time with that do tune in next week and by this time next week I mean God hope by fucking 25 past 9 we will know the full lineup for round 2 of the winter tournament of me 1 versus me 2 snooker do subscribe uh, on Twitch if you can do follow me on Twitch and then you'll know when stuff's coming on and do become a monthly badge at gofasterstrike.com slash badges or buy my book The Problem With Men or any of my downloads or DVDs from gofasterstrike.com by the way if you buy a physical thing an actual thing that exists rather than a download from gofasterstrike.com at the moment or become a monthly badger you will get a free pack of stickers for the self-playing snooker album so if you're missing some or if you just want to try and start your collection even though you haven't got the book um buy any book or dvd of mine from gofasterstrike.com and buy and become a monthly badger and get the monthly badge sent to you and you will be sent stickers while stocks last thanks for watching everyone i'm so so sorry to everyone again preemptively of also for the future because uh this isn't going to be the worst that this gets all right see you next time Goodbye.